we do not believe that it is fair for any one party to, to unilaterally impose um, any decision. Um, this issue of mandatory vaccination calls for a dialogue. It is not, this is not a usual period. It calls for a dialogue. Um, it is totally different in our view for existing workers because making vaccine a condition of employment for existing workers is a change in the terms and condition of employment. And that ought not, properly speaking, to be done unilaterally. So we await the outcome of the Labor Commissioner's um, recommendation because we not only has it to do with the aspect of the vaccination, but confronting the SGO workers. It also has to do with the fact that a number of these workers have qualified for annual vacation leave. In other words, they have already worked and accumulated leave, but the school, as part of the process of trying to squeeze the workers, are refusing to grant the workers their leave as requested. Whether how do we move forward from this pandemic? Do we make vaccines mandatory? And we need to take this discussion to the people. And um, when we say to the people, to the parliament, because under a state of emergency, these discussions must be held in the public. And we are not seeing that. What we're seeing is our elected officials sitting within a room and making decisions for us, the people, without coming to us, the people. And I think that truly bothers us. And yes, um, Grimes and Mr. Lewis, they're right in terms of the right to work as outlined in our constitution. Um, vac mandatory vaccines is unconstitutional as it is at the moment. So our government needs to take a stand. Either you make the vaccine mandatory or you're not doing it. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what bothers us from where we're sitting. You're seeing more and more as the science evolves and the pandemic, we understand that this virus is going to be here with us um, on a more permanent basis, it's not going away. Businesses as well as public service um, services need to make a decision as to how we live with the virus. We do have a solution to it, which is a vaccination. We all know that. And the statistics and the science have proven and have shown that a vaccinated person has a better chance of getting seriously ill and probably dying if um, versus those who are not vaccinated. And in Grenada, the statistics are the same. So yes, there is, there is that, and then there, there is going to be, as this crisis evolves and continues to grow, um, we need to have, and a line needs to be drawn eventually, where public service and private sector are going to have to make decisions as to how they manage the business going forward from a public health and a health and safety issue, because that is also a major concern for us, the environment within which our workers are brought into work and continue to work in. The labor movement has been very, very, very serious about the environment. And if there is breaches to the environment and health and safety, they have the right to withdraw the labor and, and that and various other situations. So it is not a, a simple thing. It is complex. And the legal, the legal decisions and the legal way forward on this is going to be something that's going to be discussed. We have various opinions for and against what is mandatory vaccination. I agree with Ms. Ms. Mitch, Ms. With Ms. Mitchell that the government needs to be clear on what we are going to do in terms of mandatory versus um, um, not. Um, I have always argued that frontline workers, security workers, customs, immigration, and so on, need to be mandated to be vaccinated because I think they are critical to the functioning of our society. And we seem to be jump. some of us seem to be jumping with an alacrity to mandatory vaccination. Now, I want Dr. Bob as a noted researcher for you to look into the policy document of the WHO um, done April 13th on, 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 on ethics and things regarding vaccination and, and so forth. And they clearly stated and advised that governments making vaccination mandatory ought to put in clauses in there for injury. There is a phenomenon. There is a phenomenon, just as how COVID is real that is called vaccine injury do you think it's fair and i want to pose that question do you think it's fair that a body a government an organization can make a decision on what goes in my body and if i potentially the rare case that i get injured i am left to flounder on my own regarding how i survive and how i overcome it do you think that is fair no i want to also add 
Um, Senator Diali keeps using a word here that I want to embrace, and that word is evolving. He said that this matter is evolving. The science is also evolving. So what is known today, what is known today may not be the fact of tomorrow. And this is why some people hesitate and they observe and they keep educating themselves. That is like what, what uh, my comrade said um, to, to Toro. Listen, education is not a one-off thing. It is continuous. That is a beautiful point. Uh, the, the, the Trudeau administration uh, won a minority of the seats in the parliament, but enough to be able to form a government. Now, uh, let us uh, talk about uh, the governing agenda of, of the Trudeau administration in ways that it affects the Caribbean uh, Canadian community. Right. Yeah, I, um, you know, going into that election uh, was a challenge. Obviously, we're in the middle of a pandemic, but, um, you know, I think it's important for governments to, uh, to, uh, to ensure that they do have the mandate to go forward on an agenda. And this is a very, uh, very different agenda than what we saw, uh, you know, a few years ago when we went into election when there wasn't a pandemic. So, of course, the number one issue today is the fight against uh, against COVID. Um, you know, the government came in and they campaigned on mandatory vaccination for anyone who wanted to access public transportation, uh, you know, for flights, uh, trains, uh, etc. Um, also, uh, renewing supports for the provinces. As you may know, uh, the relationship between the federal government and the provincial government is pretty unique. Uh, the federal government is almost like a transfer agency, and the province is the one that has control of certain taxations, uh, health care, education. So the federal government has no jurisdiction uh, in that area. Um, so getting the mandate to go forward and to, uh, to, to uh, sweater specific money uh, that goes to uh, to fight COVID was a uh, was was something of a priority. Yeah, it's it's interesting. There was a, a gentleman who uh, who lived uh, in the UK who grew up near my father, and uh, you know, in the uh, the traditional way, he sent uh, he sent a ticket for my father to come to uh, to England. Back then, as you know, um, as a Canadian citizen, you're part of the Commonwealth, and he just you know went there with ease. Uh, he was on a a boat, and in fact, uh, we researched the boat a few. Uh, a it's a few months ago, actually, um, he told me a bit about this boat and uh, his journey, and he told me how uh, the the boat took so long to to get to uh, to England. And uh, he remembers, uh, he says, washing a lot of dishes, uh, being in a small cabin with about five five other guys, some from Grenada, some from Trinidad, and eventually getting there and um, you know going up to uh, uh, to Uddersfield where he uh, where he lived, and my my uncle still lives there. And as you know, there's a large uh, Grenadian population there. So uh, his journey didn't stop there. My aunt eventually, uh, my aunt Rose, uh, who's in her mid 80s now, um, uh, came to Toronto and uh, convinced my father that this was uh, a place of even more opportunity. And uh, he decided to come here and uh, he worked uh, <clears throat> as a, uh, in a factory um, building furniture and then eventually became a, a maintenance man for, for washing machines and freezers, dryers. And uh, my father um, lives very close to me and I see him almost every day now. So, you know, being able to sit down with him uh, and listen to his stories are quite fascinating.